Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this is going to be a mini review taking a look at one of the Bragdon Enterprises latex rubber molds. I've been talking about them a little bit lately and particularly with casting the rocks that I've been using lately and um, I picked up a couple extras because I wanted to have some flexibility for a couple other effects and if you saw my previous video um, where I did the buildings for the Unplugged GT, I used one of the molds to create those walls, which then I cut down to make the building. So I thought I'd give you a chance to take a look at that mold in a little bit more detail so you can get a sense of what it produces and how I used it. So here you see the retaining wall mold that I used for the GT, the Unplugged GT buildings. There's a video of them, um, which if I haven't mentioned it in the intro, I'll put it here, wherever, somewhere. Let's see, well, maybe right there. And the mold is, in the very simplest sense, it's a latex rubber mold. Um, this is um, applied latex by uh, paintbrush. So basically you make multiple layers of the latex till you build it up to the thickness that you want. And that's how all latex molds that are handmade are made. And then um, what this mold comprises of is this wall section plus this sort of, uh, what, what is this officially called? I don't know, maybe like a corner buttress or something. Um, but I was mainly interested in this section here. The um, blocks themselves are about, say, a half an inch by a half an inch, maybe three quarters. They, they vary, of course, in size a little bit here. Um, and to give you a sense of what the texture of the mold looks like, we'll come up close here and give you just a little, a little sense of that. But the, um, the thing that caught my eye is that because it's so large, um, it is approximately, oh, 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you could cut pieces out of it and what you could build from it. Um, now, he uh, recommends, and what I've been doing with these molds, is to cast with a thin layer of resin and then apply a, an expanding foam backing to it. However, for this application, I decided to go ahead and just cast it in a solid plastic because I was making a building. I wanted something rigid. Plus, I was going to be cutting these pieces down, and I wanted something strong enough to hold an edge no matter where I cut it. This is the uh, buttress piece here. Um, so that gives you a little sense. Oh, and actually, I think we're getting some nice light on that so you can see that texture. Um, so this gives you a little sense of what the um, texture looks like when it's cast. And um, here is a small section I had left over with some uh, painting practicing that was going on here. Um, and this gives you an idea of what the texture is um, going forward. And we'll come up a little bit and give you a little better look at that. If it'll focus. Come on. There we go. All right. So it gives you a little look. So it's a really nice mold. Um, I think the rock facing that it produces is really attractive. And, um, you know, it's on the largish side. Okay, so here's 28 millimeter, Mr. Tippy, Tippy McLean. All right, so it's not, not small, but it's definitely perfect sized, I thought, for large construction pieces. You know, maybe dungeon walls, um, large towers, something like that. So this kind of a mold has a, a variety of applications. Um, and it, uh, you know, gives you the flexibility to make soft casts. You could curve it. You could... Um, make, you know, uh, bridges, walls, anything you can imagine where this texture would work well. This gives you a wonderful palette to work with. So that gives you a look at the uh, Bragdon uh, wall mold. I don't know what to call it because I can't remember what he calls it. But if you go to the website and hunt around, um, you'll be able to find this. So that gives you a little look at the mold, uh, the Bragdon sort of retaining wall mold, if you will. Um, there are a variety of molds on that site. Some of them might be worth your gander. Um, I'll put the link to the uh, site in the description down below, um, but the page that has all of the molds on it is very awkward. We'll just call it that. Um, but there are gems, if you're willing to dig, dig them out of the uh, mine there, there are some gems to be found. So. Hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this. Just a reminder that you can always modify things that you see, right? Just because it's intended for a certain purpose doesn't mean it can't be changed to something that you need. 
Um, and of course, um, I will be back with some more mini reviews. I'm going to try and shoot them back to back. Now that I've fixed my audio problems I've had for the last couple, I'm back to my pocket recorder so that I can uh, more easily control the editing and know what it's doing. Always something to learn. But um, hopefully you'll come back and join me because you know I'll be back soon with another Terranscapes video. Remember that. Uh, but you'll know. Uh! Three, two, one. Well, okay. Whew. Whew. Clear the mind. Clear the mind.